Evan Jenkins here at 971theticket.com. I'm with Brutus the Beefcake. Do we go by the barber still? Brutus the Barber, brother. Okay. That's why we carry these. Right. The Shears, they're famous. You know, the thing that I remember you most for is in the WWE, formerly, you know, the other letter, was your, your sit down or your stand up that you would have with guests and, and it would always end up in a brawl. How much fun was that? The barbershop, man. Well, you know, it was one of those deals where they just turned Brutus loose. They didn't hand me a script. I didn't go in a room and practice for 18 hours and come out. They just said, Brutus, here's your guests. Go get them. And I had lawnmowers. I had hedge clippers. I had leaf blowers. I had chainsaws. I had every kind of a t utensil that a good barber needs and just went out there and had fun with it. And you know what? The barbershop is one of the greatest of all times hits that the WWF, I'm going to say it, ever had. Okay, we're talking nicknames, right? And I'm going through a couple of these names. You went by Big Brother Booty. How did that come about? You know, I, I couldn't even tell you. During those days working for the WCW and Ted Turner down in Atlanta, uh, Vince McMahon had my name trademarked. Okay. Illegally, I might add, but once it ran out and I was able to get it, you know, down the road, I was able to go back to Brutus Bar of Beefcake and things. So, you know, they weren't ready, I guess, to take on the McMahon billions in court, so I couldn't use the name Brutus Beefcake. Okay, another one that caught my attention was the man with no okay. name. How the heck? They're like, you know what, that's the name we're going to go with. Just, yeah, you know, just reaching. You know what, I wasn't complaining, I'm picking up a paycheck. You know, but, you know, it, it hurt, you know, not to be able to use my own name. Let's face it. What was your favorite match? What, out of the 10,000? Even, even if you didn't wrestle in it, just something that you saw or witnessed or you know, something along those lines. You're best friends with Hulk Hogan. And, and I mean, were those things that you remember? What is something that Summer you're going to take? Slam match with uh, Zeus and Macho Man in the cage. Uh, WrestleMania 9. Uh, at uh, in Las Vegas, you know, winning the tag team championships as Hulk's partner, you know, then later being stripped of the titles, and we left the territory, went and wrestled into Tokyo Dome in front of uh, 30,000 people. No, what am I saying? 30,000, 72,000. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was all good, man. It's a fun day. Has there ever been a time in the ring where, you know, people say it's scripted and this and that? It's as real as can be to me because I'm sure you've had injuries. But has there ever been a time where something's gone wrong, like, ooh, I messed that up? You know, honestly, um, not, not really. You know, uh, because I never, like you said, scripted and all that. When, only when you're planning and scripting things can really, things go really bad. Mm -hmm. When you're out there just wrestling and doing what you know, you know, when you're a professional and you're doing what you're doing, you know, sometimes accidents do happen. That's it. But, you know, for me, everything always went the way I wanted it to go. And that's the way it should go, right? Exactly. Okay, so we're here at Comic-Con, Detroit. What are you gonna do on your spare time in Detroit? Well, I'm here, I have a lot of friends. You know, Detroit is the home of uh, WrestleMania three, you know, mm -hmm. biggest of all time, 100,000 people. Uh, so, you know, I got a lot of friends in Detroit. There's a lot of cool places, a lot of nice clubs, a lot of places we're gonna be, I'm gonna be hitting everything, man. Doing, running around with all my old friends, getting crazy. Giving haircuts. You're signing autographs. What is the craziest thing that you've signed? Have you signed body parts, oh. boobs? I mean, yeah, you, I yeah. mean, obviously crazy yeah, stuff, right? Yeah, signed a lot of that. Chopped a lot of people's hair off. You know, come in, pay me to chop their hair off, and then walk out with the biggest smile on their face. So, speaking of that, what 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 kind of cut can you give this? <laughs> well, it'd be a close cut, that's for sure. <laughs> now. In the last couple of weeks, the unfortunate passing of the warrior happened. Do you have any memories that you can share about him, and or if you saw his his Hall of Fame speech and all that, just how it went down, how crazy it was? Yeah, you know, I didn't see it. I, I did know the warrior. I knew him when he first came in. Jim, a, a nice guy. Uh, he, he turned into an egomaniac, one of those kind of people that starts believing his own uh, publicity and and uh, begins not to, to alienate uh, himself from people, not talking to people, thinks he's better than people, takes advantage of people, goes to his head. That's what happened to the guy. Lost all respect for him. It's a shame he had to die. But, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm a lot older than he is. And, uh, and look at me, brother. I ain't nowhere near dying. 
Because you know what? I take care of myself. You know, I don't do a lot of steroids and all that crap. Uh, you know, now, I, I go to the gym and work out. You're, you're talking about steroids. How, like, prevalent was that in wrestling? Because, I mean, some of these dudes are jacked, and I understand that you can get that way naturally by, by lifting and eating right and calories and all that kind of jazz. Was that just, like, huge when you were there? That, that Like, did you see people doing such a thing? Back in those days, no, it wasn't huge. Guys looked like wrestlers, you know, Don Morocco, uh, uh, Junkyard Dog, you know, Bob Orton Jr., you know, Andre the Giant. Yeah, I mean, all the wrestlers looked like wrestlers. They didn't look like bodybuilders. Mm -hmm. You know, then came the warrior, all jacked out, and, you know, a few guys. You know, uh, you know that they, they, they the, the road they chose. And you know, most of them all paid the ultimate price because most of them were all dead. Mm -hmm. You know, you abused your body, didn't use your head, and uh, and you pay a price for that. All right. Well, thank you very much. Brutus Beefcake, the barber at Motor City Comic Con here in Detroit. <laughs> Come on down, get a haircut. Woo!